Oh. All right, next up, episode eight, Ice. This is very uh, John Carpenter's The Thing inspired. Um, you get this little radio transmission here. Uh, Ken Kurzig, who plays Jason Voorhees in Freddy vs. Jason, is in this episode. Uh, I saw that in the uh, IMDb listing. And when I was watching this episode, I was kind of looking out for him. And I saw that he was in this episode after the opening. So I don't remember either one of those guys being that big. But it must have been one of those two guys. It, might, it must have been. I don't know. But he, it must have been. So, yeah, I was looking for him the rest of the episode. And I didn't see him. So it had to be one of those dudes. Um, we also have Xander Berkeley in here um, from... 24 is where I kind of always remember him from when I see him, but also Walking Dead as of late. We also have another Walking Dead person here with uh, Jeff Kober, who plays Bear in this episode. He's also in Sons of Anarchy for all the Sons of Anarchy fans out there. We have Steve Heither here, who um, he reminds me of a couple different, he, come, he reminds me of a different actor, but um, he plays Marty Mark. In Love Stinks. If you guys haven't seen Love Stinks, uh, which was done by Jeff Franklin, who did some of my favorite shit of all time, like Summer School and Just One of the Guys, and I'm a big Full House fan as well. Give me shit for that all you want. I love it. Um, but yeah, he did that. It was with uh, French Stewart, and Bridget Wilson, and Bill Bellamy, and Tyra Banks, and it hilarious. I love it. I've seen it so many damn times, and I laugh my ass off every single time. So he plays uh, his agent in that, and it's so damn good. So there's a, there's a recommendation for a, a comedy that does not get a, enough attention by any means. It's like late 90s. Um, so these guys are sending out this transmission. Like, we are not what we, who we are. One of them's probably Ken. And uh, they go to beat each other up and then they're going to like point guns at each other and then they decide like no. Like they go and they, you know, the one guy puts his gun to his head and the other guy follows suit and then they shoot themselves because there's just a little bit of yourself lingering somewhere in there because this thing attacks the hypothalamus um, which controls like moods and whatnot. So like when it's feeding on that, uh, your body becomes extremely angry and, and uh, you're going at people. Um. <clears throat> so then, yeah, we cut to Mulder and Scully. They're being uh, piloted in. Xander Berkeley's character is kind of already, um, you know, kind of untrusting. He wants to see everyone's credentials. He wants to see, like, so he's pretty paranoid already. I mean, we're not even there yet. We're, the cabin fever hasn't even set in on this dude yet. And he already wants to see everyone's credentials, which is, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's kind of smart to do, but no one, el everyone else there is kind of like, why? You know, I like when, when they ask Bear and he's like, I'm the only asshole who will fly you up here. So you can either come with me or you can walk. So... There's your options. Figure it out. Um, so they get there, and the uh, bear pilot, he's the pilot. He gets bit by this dog that's in there, and he's the first one infected. And so when he's infected, he doesn't, of course, want to uh, have them look at him because he knows he's infected. Um, so he fights back, and they hold him down, and they see that little freaking thing crawling around under their skin so they cut it out of them and without the host or well without this worm or whatever the host dies so bear ends up dying um, they gave the dog a sedative and kept him alive um, and then because of a mistake that the uh, chick there makes uh, they find out that the two worms will not live in the same host and that they will kill themselves and that is the cure for this. But they only have so many worms. It has to come from somebody being infected. Unless, you know, you'd have to kill somebody to get a worm out of them. Or put it into another living being like a dog or something. Like something else has to be living and it has to die for you to be able to get uh, that worm out. So they, they got a couple of them from the dead bodies. One from Bear. Um, so 
uh, they only they have limited amounts. So if they're all infected, they're fucked. Um, well, I guess not. I mean, I guess it, that would that would have been cool, right? Like if they were infected, this would have been a really cool spin on it. There should have been two of them infected, and only and no, you know, freaking worms. Then these people would have had to fight to the death to kill the other person to extract it from them or extract it from them while they're living so that they can put it into themselves and then live and then have to live with the memory that they murdered someone to stay alive. That would have been fucked up. So that would have been a much cooler spin on this story. Just having those kind of things set up there. I think that would have been, I, I don't know, maybe that would have been too dark for the show. I, I don't know. I mean, this show gets pretty damn dark. Watch the episode Home in season three. Four, I think I can't wait to get to that episode. I love it. Um, as uh, Katie in my comments had pointed out, she's like, "If anyone tells you this ain't a horror show, have them watch that episode." Absolutely, I love that episode. Um, but I just think that would have been a, a much cooler way to do this. Um, but I guess I'm just fucked up. Uh, we get to see Scully kicking some ass here when Bear tries to fight back. Like Mulder, he hits Mulder over the head with some glass jar, and then Mul Scully tackles his ass, and it's like, "Oh hell no!" <sighs> um, it's 40 below outside. So it's just like, I always like these kinds of isolation type movies where it's like either space outside. So like no matter, like there's nowhere to go. Like death is outside. There's nothing out there that you can survive. 40 below, you will not survive out there more than five minutes at best. No matter what you're wearing, no matter what. Like your fucking face, you, everything will freeze. You're in your lungs, everything. You're going to give out really, really quick. Um, and we get to see Scully and Mulder's first fight. Um, and I was thinking, well, maybe one of them, you know, one of them is infected. So this is what's going on. And it's more just a cabin fever and, and everyone's uh, not trusting each other and whatnot kind of thing. But, uh, this is the first time we get to see Scully and Mulder kind of go at each other. Um, and, but as I said, it's kind of under serious... Um, stress levels and, and whatnot. So you don't really, I wouldn't count this as their first true fight as partners, but they are going at each other uh, pretty hard. They're yelling for a while. Um, but they, yeah. Uh, and then they, let's see, yeah, the paranoia sets in. And then, um, yeah, I mean, they're going to infect Mulder because they think, that it's him and right before they do the doctor sees that the chick is and of course this thing wants to protect itself kind of like the thing it doesn't you know it doesn't want to be found out um, so it's going to push it off on anyone else because you know that that thing's being controlling her and she doesn't want it out of her body it's, it's protective over its little uh, inhabitant um, but then they put it in and uh, she is cured well, at least we think. We never know. She gets shipped off and she, you know, her signs are, are good so far. Um, but then the other ones are cleared and uh, they burn the facility and everything in it. Um, and I like how that this kind of plays off of something that we are actually dealing with right now where, you know, polar ice caps are melting and whatnot and things are starting to come out of uh, the, out of the ice that has been buried a long, long time and our immune systems aren't um, equipped to deal with certain things that are down there and it could become a huge problem. It could kill lots and lots of people. It's a big fear right now that's happening. Um, so to think of like this thing that's been buried in the ice for 20,000 years and, and it could be, if it got to the population, like the main land and, and, and it could really do serious, serious damage, like kill millions of millions of people it's terrifying so um this isn't that far-fetched at all this is something that lived a long long time ago that we don't know anything about and and now it's alive and it's out there and and it's killing people so i don't know I, just because i've been reading about that lately i was like oh geez this might be more on the nose than it thinks but yeah so they burn the facility and Mulder's all pissed about it. And usually Mulder and, and Scully are kind of seeing eye to eye. But on this one, she, like Scully, after what she went through, she's like, good, leave it there. Burn it. I don't want anything to do with that thing. Like, we need to research it now. We don't need to research it because all it's going to happen is it's going to come back to some facility. They're going to get infected and they're going to want to get back to the mainland. And there's the problem we had from the beginning. So 
Um, kind of with Scully on this one, although, you know, you would want to research it and just like, no, fucking burn it, bury it. We haven't heard of it in 20,000 years. Let's leave it down there. Um, but these government organizations that want to seem to control everything that they keep running to in the X-Files, I'm sure they would hear about this and want it. They probably didn't even burn the place. They probably went in there and like got everything they needed and then burned the place. So, Anyways, this is a really cool episode. I like this one a lot. So yeah, let's move on.